look, I don't like kink shaming people. People can do what they want as long as it doesn't harm others. But God damn, can Shad not even try to hide his fetish? It is it is literally that police squad episode from back in the day. If you guys don't know police squad where they had weird titles for every episode because it was like an absurdist comedy thing. And it was like, on tonight's episode of Police Squad, the artist's, <laughs> the writer's barely disguised fetish. Okay, we, we get into Dalen's uh, Day Out, Shadow of the Conqueror Part 3, uh, which I'll just call Part 3 is just Dalen's Redemption, okay? After the events of the Pirate Barge, right, we have probably about four and a half-ish hours, I think, left in this story. So, mind you, it took us 14 hours to get through that. The first major person we overcame was... Blackheart, it took all of 30 fucking seconds to do this. And uh, at this point, you and I and Shad all know that Shad is out of fucking plot and has not realized what's going on. So at this point, Shad defaults to what Shad knows best, which is just heaping on underage girls being sexually assaulted. I don't know how to say it any better. By the time we get to the end of this book... There are, I believe, of the hundreds of women that are on screen, of the maybe five that are like actual significant characters that have speaking lines, possibly two of them have not been raped as a major plot point, almost specifically in general, by the main character, Shad's fucking character, Dalen. And I, all of the main girls in the book, all of them who have speaking lines that I can remember or are point of view characters or uh, have a strong relationship with a point of view character have been raped by the end of this book. It is nonstop. It, at, after you hit the, fu if you're trying to find parts to jump off your own version of the edge of the world, this is the moment to bail. Because it is literally, I, unironically, if you are a person that doesn't want to hear about this shit, check out now. Because it is the entirety of the last four hours is descriptions of sexual assault and fucking rape apologia. I shit you not. Let's hop into it. Dalen's Redemption, Part 3. Uh, after we end fucking the, the pirate ship saga, um, Dalen frees a bunch of uh, rape victims. It's a bunch of girls. None of them can be, of course, none of them are over like 18. They're all described as being between like 14 and 16, which he reveals sort, shortly after was the general age of the girls he started sexually assaulting for no particular reason while he was the emperor. Mind you, he is, while he's emperor for some 30, 40 years or whatever, he is doing mass exterminations. He is the world's most prolific inventor. He is the world's most prolific and talented sword fighter and duelist. He is the world's most prolific and exhausted uh, rapist. And also, he is constantly putting down rebellions by people who are not as smart as him, but also uh, uh, they succeed. Also, he is somehow both the world's smartest inventor and smartest guy, but also the world's worst economist and tries to do uh, the libertarian's understanding of communism and destroys people. He does Holodomor's here and there uh for reasons that i think he was just like articulated as being bored he just starts having girls brought to him for his desires 
he says he makes them walk around naked. He makes them dress up in uh, Chirasian clothing, which because we've heard that the Chirasians barely wear clothing, I think he might have forgotten that. And he was just thinking Asian clothing. And in my mind, because first off, I don't think there's almost any descriptions of Chirasian clothing that are particularly deep or repetitive. If you've read Game of Thrones, like I can remember a, a number, a number of ways that people are, are described as being dressed because they're royalty and stuff. One of the most notable ones was uh, Ned Stark showed up, be, uh, showed up resplendent in a in a pink doublet emblazoned with the sign of the wolf, uh, the, the the wolf sign of his house on the chest, a dark crushed velvet cape. Uh, high, fine leather boots, a scabbard at his waist, and fine riding pants that seemed as well suited for combat as they did for a day at court. I swear to God, that is probably half correct. You could type that in, and you'll get chunks of that out of the actual book. That is off rip. I can remember that. Fu- I can remember the fit. I haven't read that book in eight years or more. I think I actually that's from the first one because he's still alive. I read that book in 2000 and fucking 11, right after the first season came out. So that I'm, when I tell you I remember how people dress in books and shit, I, I, I fucking do. I can remember all sorts of stuff in, in all of the way of the king books. All the ladies wear uh, gloves on their left hand because that's their little slut hand. If they walk around without a glove on it, everyone's like, yo, look at this fucking hoe out here with her fingies out. God damn, I'm fucking... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can remember all of these things. I cannot remember what the Chirasians wear. So in my mind, all I can imagine is just all of these like 14 year old literal Japanese schoolgirls and like white girls wearing Japanese schoolgirl clothing that like shad with blue hair is abusing. That's all I can think of for all of his descriptions of these scenes. I was listening to it by the way too. So I can't just speed skip. I just all the, the whole time. And of course I had never felt the way, but I brought them and after a while I needed virgins because I was too burned out on just normal shit. I needed to do worse shit. And it's like real grimy. And mind you, he just impaled his own bastard son through the asshole with a gigantic splintered post for even being like associated with this shit, much less doing it. During this chunk of time immediately after freeing these girls from the other barge rapists everywhere in this fucking world right no more interesting crime no one's ever being attacked for for doing like embezzlement or like high level financial crimes like no one's he's not like listening for like oh i hear somebody has too much gold tinkling in their pocket he's like oh there's another rape happening okay this fucking world i swear to god uh one of the girls he rescued who I swear to God, the whole time I was listening to the description of her, it sounds just like fucking Kara uh fucking Supergirl. Um, maybe not, not quite, but like seriously. Okay, so she has bright blue eyes. She was extremely cute. She was 16 years old or maybe 14, very young, something like that, with dark hair and streak, dark blue hair maybe with like streaks of red through it. And I think she was like half naked still because they didn't have anything. And this girl was just like throwing herself at him because as a girl who just escaped from brutal, relentless, imprisoned uh, sexual assault by a series of strangers on a ship, the first thing she thought was like, hey, I I want to go into a sexual relationship with another man. It's just as, as all victims of sexual assault do they immediately are like i want to gravitate towards men right now what i want to be around right now the most is a guy a strange man i've never met before you know it's like shad if you ever watch back through this i'm not saying you should do it but you can go get online and just do what i did as a crime and courts reporter and see somebody testify about their sexual assault that actually happened to the person that did it. If you want to just ruin your day, you can get a deeper sense of these things. Those women are real. You will have to hear a woman out. That might be too much. But if you just want to experience 
the worst possible thing you'll ever fucking experience. You can do it right now. Just look up testimony of SA victim, and then you can have all of your research done for you just to see, just if you ever want to try to do this a little bit more realistically. But I'll just, I'll go ahead and spoil some findings for you. There are none of these girls that are going to be looking beautiful immediately after they got done being uh, attacked in the holding cell of of a ship for multiple days on end. They're not going to be really together. They they don't go and powder their faces and get showers and then show up in your your room. That 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 just doesn't happen. I can't really articulate that anymore. Um but the one possibly fucking interesting thing that could have come from this book and didn't happen, didn't happen. So he described paragraphs, maybe pages before that girls that are attacked like that and stay in the dark too long can turn into the super succubi that kill guys called lusts. Now that would have actually justified, despite how gross it is, the actions of this random girl as she goes forward, she gets turned down by him and then she goes and turns her attentions immediately to Sane, um, his boy companion, who is a boy, but is also like basically his age. They talk about that a bunch. It's really fucking lame. And then she goes and feminine wiles him into a secluded area. And I thought as almost, I think any person who has read a book before would have thought that this was going to be the first move by the darkness to attack Dalen, who is supposed to be the new son of the light, the fucking, the, 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 the fixed sinner who is going to come and save the world. It was a, a, one of these lust creatures. That girl had turned into it and she was going to kill him. And instead she goes and she's going to kill Sane or fuck him up and turn him crazy evil or something. And then they're going to try to attack this guy. And that's going to ha- be how we get introduced to the third act conflict. Holy shit. He actually did narrativization he just wrote a fuck after fucking 14 hours he wrote story wrong she just fucking wanted to have sex because she was like i'm damaged goods now so i'm gonna throw myself at the first guy who's nice to me uh because then because what else can i do i'm a woman that's been uh fucking sexually assaulted that's the end of my life I am used goods. I can do nothing anymore. This is Shad's fucking characters repeating this, by the way, a lot throughout the rest of this. I want to, because I can't remember where it happens, give a special shout out to one thing that I think occurred earlier and I forgot about that was just the saddest shit I've ever seen in a book, too. Um, Arik and um, Dalen are starting to like hit it off, right, and be friends and stuff. And they're talking about religion and shit. And uh, Arik is just like, hey, man, I'm going to go for a walk. You want to go for a walk with me? It's like a nice night. We can just kind of like walk around and talk and, you know, be buds. And fucking Dalen's just like, no, nah, that's gay. He literally says, that's gay. I'm not going to go for a walk with you. Just like, no homo, dude. I'm, I'm going to fucking stick here. And that was just the most depressing insight into a person I've ever experienced from a book. That... That's just fucking, because I know the comfort with which he says certain things just has that vibe as a person who's read a lot of books and a lot of, especially like amateurish shit from people. I get the vibe sometimes where I'm like, I can tell what is something that you based on reality. And I think Shad said that to people before. They're like, hey, man, you want to go fucking hang out? He's like, no, that's fucking gay. (laughs) It's the, it's the fucking worst shit this this section gets worse we're about to get really deep into it during all of this stuff that's going on the one chick laura whatever her name is that's been fucking stapled to the side of this plot right we finally through conversations that don't matter she has a series of chapters where she's trying to find dalen and arik it's boring as fuck it doesn't matter and the whole time uh arik who's the other guy is just like do you want to do a sex with me? Why do you make your face angry? If you do your face is angry, then possibly you want to ride my dick? Is my penis too strong for you? 
all over and over and over again. It's 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 not funny the first time, and by the fifteenth time, I'm I've been assured that it's not funny. <laughs> Don't know what to add to that. Um, it does get worse. We find out that she is one of Dalis's fucking girls from the past. She's described as a middle aged, beautiful middle aged woman, and we find out that she's. Uh, I almost don't know why I started doing a Donald Trump. She's a beautiful girl. I knew her when she was younger. I can't quite remember where from. Um, it was my bed chambers. Oh shit! Oh, that was a big. That was a naughty day, and I shouldn't have uh, done this Scooby Doo with her. <laughs> so we find out that she was one of Dalis the Conqueror's victims. Um, he made her. Par- he paraded her, stole her from her family, paraded her around naked. And uh, repeatedly sexually assaulted her for weeks, months, years. I can't quite remember. Uh, I wasn't really trying to commit any of that to memory. Um, and so Dalen knows this and does not immediately be like, hey, man, you should just slit my throat. I feel like that's what should happen here is you should just kill me. He apologizes on behalf of his father. I don't know if I've mentioned this because it happens so much that it's irritating. Dalen has convinced everybody that he's just his own kid and that's why he's young now and everybody falls for it. It's literally so stupid. I keep forgetting to say it, but that's just a recurring thing is that everyone's just like, how do you know everything that your father knows and you have all of his clothes and they fit and you have his sword that only you could possibly have because it's like bonded to your soul. And you have his special dueling glove and you know where all of his treasure is hidden and you're a grandmaster uh, duelist at 17 and you have all of his powers and you have like a fucking fucking doctorate in engineering and you're 17. Like how, how is that possible? And he's like, I I just, my dad talked to me a bunch. Well, why didn't we see you in the village? I fucking walked back and forth. It doesn't make any fucking sense. So it was hard to bring up. This continues while he's talking to his rape victim I cannot explain. I cannot express this enough. This man is talking to his own rape victim for a while and just never cops to it. Uh, she finds out on her own later. Um, and while they're talking, she says all the things that was like happening to her and how much she hates his dad. And then they kind of get like uh, a little like a moment together. And I'm like, they're not going to try to push a romance between these two. And fuck it. And she is, by the way, in her like 40s, 40s, 50s. And he's supposed to be a 17-year-old boy, 85-year-old trapped in the body of a 17-year-old boy. And he's just like, oh, you're beautiful. And, like, at that point, I was like, I think it's okay from now on to fuck with Shad. But maybe I'm wrong. And don't worry, I was confirmed later on when this actually gets worse. The book, the book gets worse. In the last half hour is the worst part. We're not even there yet. Um, during this chunk, we get introduced to our third act conflict because by the way, we solved all of the conflicts in the story aside from Dalen saying like, Oh shit, yo, Hey, I'm the guy that fucking raped you, uh, when you were a kid, uh, fucking crazy, right? You're still cute though, by the way, like that's, that's not the most sociopathic thing to ever say to somebody ever. I don't know, but it's wild. It's, it's a thing. It's a thing that happens. The fucking balls to write this shit is it beyond me. Not just because it's like a liberal like you doesn't have the courage to try to uh, be as uh, um, subversive and dangerous to the industry as me. It's like, no, man, I'm just, uh, I talk to girls, man. I don't know how to say that. I've just, I've just conversed with women before. <laughs> I have just been like, hello, Emily. Hi, Megan. Jennifer, what's up? How are you doing, Amelia? And just had conversations with women. So, and so I just have a deep understanding in my heart that that shit is uh, ethically impermissible uh, because it's disgusting on a level that surpasses profanity. It is... It, it is one of those where it's like, if speaking intellectually from a distance, I can say you shouldn't be outright brain to death with the hammer for saying it. 
But if I was near you, it would take other people restraining me to keep me from start slapping you around for saying something that fucking gross. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I'm just a man. Like I'm just a red blooded American fucking, I don't like bad things happening to girls. I don't like people mistreating women kind of shit. It's just the cowboy in me would just make me want to grab you by your shirt and just give you a few to try to wake you up from whatever fucking coma you just slipped into. Like, hey partner, you want to fucking, you feeling better yet? You said some crazy shit. I thought, I thought you had a spell on you. Don't worry. We, 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 we fucking slapped your eyes black, but I think you'll be fine. Like it's just, Beyond the pale, beyond the pale, and it gets worse. I cannot believe how worse it gets. We're introduced to the Act Three sub conflict, which is uh, the uh, the Dayless cult, right, of people that want him to come back. Unironically, uh, the like blue haired pronoun girls. He just has a, literally. There are. I'm, I know I keep saying literally, but I can't, there's no other word for it. He is, he literally does a Ben Shabibo, uh, breaks his fucking foot off in the ass of stupid college kid compilation conversations with people that are part of his like pseudo Soviet fucking fascist cult that want to bring back, uh, Dalicism ism. He talks to this little girl, and this is the moment where it was just like, oh, it's it's known politics understander, shadiversity. Hold on. This is one of the ones. Well, I, I actually have some recordings from this. I want to play these. Uh this these are one of the few where it was literally like I had to I had to I had to commit this to film. I'm gonna play both of them because they're fucking maddening. Russian showed that she was now taking him far more seriously. And let me tell you, Jenna. You're nothing but a deranged zealot. I despise everything you stand for. I didn't lose my way while in hiding. It was there that I finally found myself again. I rediscovered the man who fought through the fourth night, the hero you say you love. And that man would have been horrified at everything I did as emperor. He would have fought with all his power to destroy him. Dalen glared at the woman. I think this is just an extra 30 minutes or 30 seconds on it. The problems in the current government don't validate the Dawn Empire. Redistributing wealth is just another name for state-sanctioned theft. I stole everything from everybody. Land, money, and resources. And then gave back just enough for the people to survive. Hoarding the rest for my military and indulgence. I murdered anyone who opposed me. Took away the people's right to speak. The very freedom you flaunt on countless soapboxes through the city. I would have slaughtered any group who spoke against me to the level you speak against the current government. You have so to sit through this you with say me. Things are. They're a damn sight better than the Dawn Empire and aristocracy. You want a better life for the poor? Good. But bringing back the failed and oppressive ideologies of the past is the most foolish thing you can do. The Dawn Empire is not the answer. You would be just as poor as you are now, but even more <laughs> oppressed and miserable. <laughs> The conquer As you might tell from that, that was only a minute and a half. That was a minute and a half. You've been listening to me talk for like two hours. That was a minute and a half of Shad's writing. And your eyes are like bleeding right now, aren't they? <laughs> he never shuts the fuck up. That <laughs> whole fucking endless fucking speech. Hold on. Uh, this is, I want to play this one too. This one's actually fucking funny, I think. This is the um, one from way earlier. Sharp angles, defined jaw, and prompt servants of the law. Known for all its sharp angles, defined jaw, and prompt oh, servants sorry. of the light. Dalen was expecting someone, but certainly not a bringer. Hobbling to the man who sat facing the road, Dalen called out in a disgruntled tone, Hey, you! What are you doing? Hey, you! The man turned to look at Dalen. He was at least in his fifties, yet still looked like a pup to Dalen's aged eyes. His face looked to have been chiseled from stone for all its sharp angles, defined jaw, and prominent chin. He was clearly fit and strong, a common trait among Eurasians, 
as identified by the bringer's dark brown skin and bright yellow hair, which was cut very short and faded at the temples. <laughs> Hello there, the man said in a voice so clear and enunciated he might have been a stage actor. He spoke in a cultured Hamaran accent and, added with the fact that he was really close, indicated that he hadn't been born. Well, I can tell he's a Cherasian because he's dark-skinned, tall, and athletic, and has a high fade. Uh, we're being canceled because of our beliefs? Like, right, you wrote that? You wrote that on purpose, my man? <laughs> These are the writing sample chunks. I only have three. I buy, I, I, this is, do you understand what I'm saying? I got one more. I wanted to see what it is. Our interests and the rest of us, the majority of the nation, suffer in poverty. Dalen oh, had this to one, yeah. a snort. The rich <laughs> ensured <laughs> that the rich are elected? Was she actually paying attention to her words? The poor constituted the larger vote. The reason why the rich were in power was because the poor were electing them. Granted, there were more complex reasons behind this, like access to education, but it all ignored the fact that getting someone elected from the factories or tenements didn't ensure they would represent the poor any more than assuming someone who was rich wouldn't. <laughs> she was making moral judgments upon people based on their social status, rather than their individual actions, the same thing Dalen had done when he overthrew the aristocracy and executed them. God. The, the writing is so profoundly dull, but no, do you understand what I mean by known politics understand her shadowversity? <laughs> um, actually, I don't know if you understand this, but if the poor, who are most of the people, wanted to be elected, all they would have to do is vote for the poor. If rich people weren't supposed to be elected, then why are they being voted for? Checkmate, m'lady. <laughs> Damn. And just the talking. That talking like that is what I mean by the, I'm only hitting specific plot beats. But... We meet that fucking uh, blue-haired liberal little fucking commie bitch, and uh, she reveals through whatever the fuck that the daily the deists or whatever have a plot to destroy the island everyone's on. It's just, they're gonna do a terrorism. They're gonna do a terrorism for reasons that I cannot remember. And if I did, I swear on Christ's name, I would not give a fuck about. Um, and it's they're just going to throw a big rock into it. So it's uh, we got to blow up the asteroid. So suddenly we are now also ripping off the uh, classic 1996, I believe, movie uh, Armageddon starring Bruce Willis. And uh, I think I think I think fucking Matt Damon's in there <laughs> or Ben Affleck. Don't want to miss a thing, but I'm missing you. So right around then, everybody figures out that Dalen is uh, Dalen. And so we start the other chunk immediately at the same time of he's going to go try to save the world, by which I mean this brick of whatever the fuck, because they're throwing a big rock at it. Don't, it's space magic. It's space magic reasons rock falling right now. Um, because of communists and he's like, I've got to go stop this right now before it hits the thing, but I can only use my super magic fuckboy powers. Um, and his, uh, rape victim finds out that he is who he is. And so does Arik. And so they're both trying to take him out because Arik reveals in one of the most, I don't give a fuck reveals of all time that he is secretly Che Guevara. The whole time he he is Che Guevara to fucking uh, to, to fucking Dalis's Batista, so to say. He led the revolution that overthrew Dalis, 
so successfully that Dalish just kind of left a bit and everyone forgot about him. <laughs> and, and they fight and uh, Dalen wins or loses. Dalen gets killed and it's really boring. This is the big one of the many big climactic fights at the end of this thing. He fights Dalen. Dalen loses and gets stabbed through the chest. And he's like, finally, I've got what I want and I get to die. And then he's like, he brings him back. He says, I forgive you uh, for all of the shit that you did because I feel like you could be a good guy because I've been traveling with you for a little while and I see that you have some good in you, which is first off, just not true. It, you you have been walking around with a guy who is a mass murderer and a mass rapist who has never copped to his crimes, who lied to you about doing them. Um, and the most you can say is he kind of like slaughtered the crews of two ships and saved some girls. But you could have done that without literally doing kin slaying and uh, executing a guy in the most profane and barbaric way possible. Because he kind of just lost his cool a bit, but not even lost his cool a bit. He like thought it through. Like he are he he premeditated the gruesome and insanely over the top murder of someone he'd already beaten in combat. So he is a man without pride or honor. There is literally nothing whatsoever redeemable about him other than he's basically like a Nazi scientist. This is what I was thinking toward the end. And the Nazi scientist vibe comes back where it's like, he did some shit. 1938 to 1945. We're not going to bring it up. But aspirin. Y'all like aspirin, right? We might not have it without him. Like, literally, he did not help make aspirin. Hold on now, citizen. Hold that thought. We'll get back to it. They fight. He comes back. Okay, so he gets superpowers. They go. At some point during this, he beats up his rape victim again. Whoopsie doodle. Um, she, they saved the world during this, the other black guy who was boring as fuck and talked about his hard dick a bunch. He dies too. Sorry. Um, and a bunch of the arch knights die who are important. Uh, no one cares. Um, then we go to Dalis's trial, which is the last like hour and 15 minutes of it. And I feel like it was supposed to be like John Galt's thing. That you always hear about in the fucking Atlas Shrugged. Like, who is John Galt? The John Galt talking for 10 hours about shit. Uh, unironically, boring as fuck. Um, all these people come forward and then they're like, hey, uh, he murdered my family. Hey, he's a fucking rapist. Like, he literally raped me. I am a rape victim. I am here right now. During this, we get to see the most profane shit happen. This is unironically like... Shadiversity as a human being has passed beyond forgiveness. He is actually a bad person IRL because these are things that he is articulating through his character. During these depositions of rape victims, some of them have children and some of them don't. The only ones who are given a voice are the ones with children, all of whom say Dalen's disgusting and I hate him. But without him sexually assaulting me, I wouldn't have my child the light of my life. This happens, I think, no less than three times. One of the ladies like, he was actually pretty nice to me and now I have a kid. Then he goes on to describe all the women who did not have kids as being suspiciously more upset about being raped because they didn't have kids. So his articulation is that women who are raped are generally only upset about it because they don't get pregnant. For this, I now feel justified in all of my criticisms of Shadiversity because that is the most profanely, th profanely evil thought I've ever seen articulated in a book outside like outside of something like Mein Kampf that that is literally equivalent to his real life beliefs um that that these women who have been ruined by his own words 
are only especially upset about being sexually assaulted because they did not also have to bear their rapist child and that the ones that did bear their rapist child all feel a lot better about the circumstances. That is literally evil. Shadowversity, if you're reading back through this, you're a bad person for that. You're not beyond forgiveness, um, but you're a bad person for articulating it. That is an evil thought, a fundamentally evil thought. It is without any basis in reality. I, yet again, I implore you at any point to just go and look up online on YouTube. You can read the depositions if you don't want to see all the crying, the screaming, the tears, people having breakdowns. You can go just experience the real life deposition of a rape victim at any time you want. You can get online and listen to what they have to say about their real life experiences. I am telling you, it, it'll it'll probably be a bit of an eye opener for you if you have eyes to open. But I gotta say, that shit, fucking weak, disgusting. In fact, deplorable. You are a lesser version of the human being you could be for harboring thoughts that disgusting inside your brain. And I believe it is incumbent on me to say that and for that idea to be spread to other people because that shit is beyond the fucking pale. And if it wasn't just, if it was one off thing, it would be more forgivable but it seems like it's part of a pattern of behavior inside and outside of this book that I think is literally endemic to you as a person speaking through this character and articulating your philosophies. It is beyond the pale, beyond forgiveness. It is a disgusting thing to say, to think. I hope beyond hope you don't say that shit to your kids. I, if you are a good father, you will never fucking utter those words to your own children. That is a direct statement. I don't care how bad people feel about that. Don't ever say that to your kids. I hope your wife has at some point told you that that's not an okay thing to think and that you she just never read this. Beyond the pale. But I, I digress. That's basically almost the end of the book. Uh, it ends, of course, with everyone saying, oh, okay, I guess we're going to have to sentence Dalis to death. And then they say, uh, hold on. And an old guy stands up in the audience and says, I want to declare Dalen a hero. This is after a... Th th I, you have to assume that this, this is a court proceeding, that the rape victims are still in there. An old guy stands up and he's like, I'm the senator from Milwaukee and I think that Dalen should be declared a hero for all the good he's done. He saved the world that one time. <laughs> like, now is not the time, Grandpa... That lady was just crying up on the stands. I know this is Shad World, so she's a human. She's not a real human being. She's just a woman that has been sexually assaulted at some point. Might probably not married, uh, so she's not a real human being. But like, try to try to have some some modicum of decency in your fucking heart. Ridiculous, ridiculous. And so, of course, it, just getting through everything. There's a bunch of shitty ass speeches, half an hour of dog shit speeches and stuff. And we get to the end of it, and he is sentenced to basically go on adventures and save the world for forever or until he dies as one of the most important people in society, uh, an arch knight. And he's just like, I could actually break out of my bonds at any time and continue doing anything. I really hope that my, my journey back to the light sticks because, you know, I do have that evil inside of me. And, um, now that I'm more powerful than I was as uh, a dictator, prolific rapist and mass murderer, that um, I guess that the light sticks and uh, I, I, I become a benefit to society. The book ends with him teaming up with his rape victim, uh, the woman from the earlier story who's actual like supportive male friend who just happened to be the my dick is strong guy. Uh, he's dead. So he teams up with his rapist who now has to walk around or his, his rape victim and now has to walk around with her rapist. I'm assuming for the entirety of uh, book two, if it ever exists. So if there is a book two, it will literally be Dalen's day out uh, part two Dalen in conversation with his uh, 
uh, his child sexual abuse victim <laughs> as they journey across uh, the Everfall world. The end. Um, I can't say... I can't say that it's like literally the worst book I've ever read because I don't think there's a way to quantify this as being as how, as what it is because it starts off as an attempt at a bad fantasy book and ends as the sociopathic screeds of a uh, mentally debilitated bigoted pro rape christian that it, like it is it, it it literally transitions from some 16 year old's attempt at ripping off brandon sanderson into a sort of half-assed version of mind comp for libertarians it is the most bizarre fucking book I have ever, I was like, okay, this is just generally Drek. It's pretty boring. It's a little edgy for the first three quarters of it. The last four hours of this book should be fucking studied by people trying to prevent mass shootings. I, I feel like anyone that enjoys the last chunks of this book or feels like vindicated in their beliefs because of it or finds a sense of comfort or community in the philosophies that it espouses and hammers at home, um, should be put on a watch list, should have their rights to bear arms stripped for them for the good of uh, humanity, and generally just treated with a sense of uh, uh, pitying derision from the better-built human beings around them. It is beyond the pale as i have probably said too many times one of the most profoundly insanely evil chunks i, I will get into i'm going to go ahead and read chat here in a second and take a break after that um but in, i'm just going to summarize my ideas uh about it real quick um I, I think i kind of already already did that but i will say there are chunks of this book that can be saved the last four hours of it have to be cut away permanently. They are a larger stain. Unironically, I thought I knew a lot about how kind of a like lame lolcal dickhead fucking Shadowversity was until I got to the last four hours of this book. And it was like, you're a bad guy. You're just a bad person. Like unironically, like, no one's ever called you out. Like no wonder you don't have any friends. Like, holy fuck, Jazza is such a cute, like, dude. He's an adorable little fucking, I make Pokemon cards for kids shit, crying about his fucking, like, gay friends being mistreated in fucking Canberra or whatever the fuck. Like, I couldn't imagine some sweetheart like him fucking reading his older brother's book just in the dark in his bed, and his wife's like, oh, Jazza, how's, uh, how's fucking Shad's book? Is he, are you fucking getting on with it? He's like... I'll just uh, I just don't want to talk about it. <laughs> just just turning every page like this, thinking about all the times he like ate cereal across the guy across the table from the dude. I think Shad believes in this book holistically. I think he thinks it's probably good, and if he doesn't, if he he has any issues with his own inability to write quality wise. He more than likely deeply believes in a lot of the philosophies espoused during it. And it's not one of those things you can hand wave away by saying like, well, no, Dalis is a bad guy. Everything he says is bad. Dalis is a, a fucking schizophrenic at best character in his development. And he does at time whip quite violently back and forth between like different uh different vibes of like whether or not this guy's being a mouthpiece for shad or not it's extremely evident when he is very obviously repeating shadiversity and his friends and associates online the libertarian uh center right american libertarian center right um screeds you know it, like literally word for word there's a chunk in this book where he extensively talks about 
um, open border policies being generally more dangerous than people give them credit for. And that like destabilizing the like population build of an area is like really one of the biggest problems that like a country can face. That's stuff that's coming out of Dalen's mouth all the time. This articulation about these fucking assault victims at the end is fucking insane. It's fucking insane. Like, I've seen so much edgy shit in my life. I you, Shad would have been better off never publishing this. It is, it is literally disgusting. It was funny and like, oh, it's just like his AI art. It's a little creepy, a little porny, kind of sus. And then it goes to like, dude, this is legitimately evil. There's, it's no fuck, there's no, I will debate you on it. Shed, if you want to fucking come down from wherever on your little fucking Pegasus and give me an extra 30 million views, I'll debate you on how fucked up all that shit you wrote at the end of this book is. If, if there's a Shadiversity fucking associate, drag yourself before the fucking court and present your fucking findings your facts, your figures on why the fuck that shit's not just the most profoundly evil stuff to write. I, I am, I am here for it. It's beyond the pale. I will say I'm going to do a little segment after this where I'm going to start playing some video games, talking about how I would fix shadow of the conqueror. If you want to stick around for that, um, I'm going to do that. And then I will also be taking questions for that after the break. I'm gonna have to hop up Drink some water. Like and reconnoiter power up and then we're gonna hop into that. Like and subscribe.